living on top of the world. These are the circumpolar bears. No matter where polar bears live in the Arctic, their lifestyle remains the same. They spend their time following the ebb and flow of the sea ice in pursuit of seals, their primary prey. And it is this lifestyle that puts them most at risk. Man-made toxins slowly make their way north, accumulating in fish and seals, and ultimately polar bears. These toxins affect their immune system, making bears more susceptible to disease. Biologist Andrew DeRoche has been studying polar bears throughout the Arctic for over 20 years. He's found that pollution rates in polar bears vary around the world. The probably the most polluted polar bears that, that have been documented so far are actually in the western Russian Arctic around Franz Josef Land. Those bears in the Kara Sea, Franz Josef Land, Novaya Zemlya seem to be the most polluted in the world right now, as far as we know. Even banned compounds like PCBs still show up in polar bears. These, these compounds are extremely persistent. There's still a lot of it in the environment that is slowly leaking out. So even if you ban the production, we still have a massive store in garbage dumps and spread around the developing world um, that is still leaking into the environment and making its way north. But the good news is, is things like PCBs are no longer increasing uh, and in some populations appear to be slowly decreasing. But it, it seems like every time we go in and look, uh, there are new compounds showing up in polar bears. Surprisingly, flame retardants are the most recent chemicals found in polar bears. These chemicals are used throughout the world, yet their effects are largely unknown. While pollution remains a concern for polar bears, a far greater problem looms on the horizon, one they may not be able to recover from. The secret to polar bear success lies beneath their feet. The sea ice provides the only place to effectively hunt seals. Their lives depend on the ice. The worldwide range of polar bears matches the Arctic ice cover, but the bears concentrate near land, where more productive waters attract seals. Polar bears are known to wander vast distances, greater than any other bear. As the ice recedes in summer, polar bears lose their frozen platform to hunt seals. Some bears follow the retreating ice northward, while others wait the summer out on land. These bears rarely eat, entering a sort of walking hibernation that can last for months until winter brings the ice once again. The best studied population we have is actually one in Hudson Bay. And there we've seen that the, the breakup patterns of ice uh, are occurring earlier and earlier every year and we've seen a general decline in the condition of those animals. So what's happening is the bears are losing time on the sea ice hunting and are forced ashore and they have to basically go without food for up to three to four months. As the most southern population of polar bears, the bears of Hudson Bay have the most to lose should warming trends continue. But how quickly these effects take place is unknown. It's very hard to predict how uh, species like polar bears will change. There are um, good evidence that they are extremely adaptive in their behaviors, they're very flexible. It could be that they just come on shore and start to feed more on land. Um, but unlike grizzly bears, um, polar bears really do rely on the marine ecosystem. And I, I think that the future is going to be one of grave concern for polar bears in general. Churchill's bears have been studied on land since the 1960s. Yet little is known about them when they go out onto the frozen sea. A new study using satellite collars opens a window into the bears' winter world. 
we know a lot about the population structure and the reproductive rates, but we really don't have a very good insight on what's going on with the bears out on the sea ice. What we're trying to look at is how the bears are making use of the different habitats on the sea ice and trying to get a benchmark of really the use of Hudson Bay as it is today. Try to closely monitor what, what might be happening to the population over time. I think really if there's a species that's going to mobilize people to conserve or change their behavior, uh, the polar bear is a pretty good one. The world would be a different place if we didn't have polar bears. People really respond to bears in general and, and they are um, something that we feel as sort of some sort of kinship towards.